In this video, what we're going to cover is why we binge and some tips on how to stop binging for good. This video is split into four parts. Part three, why we comfort eat, why we feel powerless to binges. Tip number one, stop dieting. Tip number two, don't get too hungry. Tip number three, always carry a healthy snack. And tip number four, break the habit part one. you never got taught how to deal with your emotion. Most of our upbringing connected these foods with joy. When we did have an emotion, many of us, I can vouch for myself, wasn't really taught how to deal with our emotions. I mean, can you tell me whether or not you had like any lessons at school to say, hey, when you're feeling bad, this is what you should do. It's it's absolutely normal to feel anxiety when it's like this because your mind is only in survival mode and it likes doing something familiar. But And also, it's also natural to want to be um, in a tribe. So when you're feeling a bit left out or someone's like making fun of you, and you're not feeling good, these emotions are absolutely normal, and this is what you should do. Nobody really kind of, I don't know about you guys, but I do not remember a time in my life when somebody said to me, like, it's okay to feel safe when it comes to emotions. In actual fact, that when I fell over or something like that, I would get a, put a plaster on that, like, my parents would say, hey, I tell you what, we'll make that feel better. Let's go and get an ice cream, you know, and it didn't happen that long ago with my daughter, actually. She was having a huge meltdown. My dad, like, reached over and gave her a sweet, and I'm like, hang on a sec, you know. She doesn't need a sweet right now. She just needs a cuddle. And another thing, if you weren't given the adequate nurturing during the first years of your life, especially the first seven years, then unhealthy eating habits like binging is also very typical amongst people who have destructive eating behaviours. The first seven years is absolutely crucial to the child's development and is the foundation of their coping mechanism as they grow up into adults. So if you are taken from the breast too early or your mom was away like working all the time or if you had a traumatic childhood or even abuse it is highly likely that unless you have dealt with the trauma, there's a high risk in developing addictions and other mental problems thereafter, as a way your child's mind try to cope with the situation that is happening to them. So really, so if you compounded everything, I know I've got a bit of a tangent there, compounded everything, so we grew up um, rewarding joyful, happy events with things like ice cream, biscuits and all those processed foods. Plus, we didn't learn how to deal with our emotions. Plus, our survival instinct to always binge at a sign of any um, fast, which means any kind of dieting. Plus, the fact that these processed foods sends dopamine shots into our brain which has a chemical reaction to oh addictive foods sorry that's my daughter she's just come back <laughs> from like um, having some fresh air so um addicted to these foods when you finally say to yourself right now i shouldn't eat those foods in the cupboard the problem with that is, is that bearing in mind what I've said before about having the drive for those things because these companies have been cleverly designed these foods to be very highly addictive because of the way our biological makeup is made. So when you are trying to refrain from there, it is going to feel almost impossible 
especially when you have no idea why you are being driven to those foods. And it's not because you haven't got any willpower, no. You are fighting against years and years and years and years of compounded stuff that makes it almost impossible for you to resist those foods. Okay, so now is the good bit. So now you understand why we binge and why it is completely natural for us to binge and why it's actually made it worse because of the chemical stuff that these big companies has done to make it almost impossible for us to refuse eating those foods. It's kind of playing with us, which is like completely wrong. So first of all, one thing you have to do is stop dieting. Number one thing, stop dieting, stop restricting, because as soon as you diet, as soon as you restrict, it's almost like your whole brain is being hijacked by your prim primitive brain. And when it comes to your brain, your emotional primitive brain will always win, okay, over logic. Even though you think those foods are poisonous, those foods are not good for me, those foods are making me fat or whatever, or, you know, your logical brain who wants to stop binge eating will always be superseded by your primitive brain. Your primitive brain is far, far stronger. Okay, so the only way that you can shut up that primitive brain is to stop starving it. It doesn't like to be starved. It wants you to stay alive. Starving, dieting equals danger for the primitive brain. Second tip is don't leave eating too late. If you can avoid it, like binging, like I said, is the most natural thing um, to do as a reflex to being starving. Uh, and if you have a normal connection with food, people who have normal connection to food, binge. It's just a natural reflex. So even when you do overcome your eating challenges, your destructive eating challenges. It doesn't mean you'll never ever binge anymore. The reason why is because it's just natural to binge. And every now and again, when I'm caught out working or I forget to eat lunch, I end up eating more than I, uh, than I should because of the fact that that primitive brain just hijacks me and more often than not, I do eat more than I should. So again, no restricting, no dieting, and don't leave food till late. Always carry a snack, a healthy snack with you. Bananas are really good to carry with you because they have the same sort of chemicals, those happy chemicals, what I was saying about dopamine. Um, bananas, it makes you feel really satisfied. So to eat that when you haven't got time, that second to make a nutritional meal, a banana in between those will prevent you from feeling that, you know, I'm survival instinct. Um, third thing, break the habit. I know this is probably the hardest. Honestly, you don't need any therapy from me. If you can do that by yourself, break the habit. And you know what? Studies have shown in neuroscience now that when you are born, and we are always learning things like ice cream and biscuits and chocolates equals fun, joy and love. Um, we can change those connections in our brain. It is never, ever, ever too late to break those connections. And the only way to change the habit is by making something unfamiliar to become familiar and so in simple terms maybe dieting is kind of the norm for you maybe restricting is kind of not norm for you um, maybe binging is very normal for you so whenever you do stop dieting and and if you want to stop 
binging it is gonna feel uncomfortable I'm not gonna lie to you it's not gonna be comfortable because of the fact that our primitive brain has connected all those rituals as being a habit and a habit as far as it's concerned whether or not it's painful for you right now it's gone beyond thinking it's unsafe like right at the beginning it's formed a belief that you're dieting you're you're binging and um, restricting has formed some sort of purpose in its life it's like feeling that it is part of its survival but the problem is it's kind of in conflict because uh, our survival instincts doesn't allow us to continue that for a long time because eventually it needs food and it needs it fast and because of an energy wise things that are sugary and uh, sugary foods um usually the culprit is because it it gets into your bloodstreams very quick Go to part four, the final part of this video series. Tip number five, break the habit part two. Change your language. Tip number six, stop reacting and delay. Tip number seven, find something to do. Tip number eight, stop fueling the binge thoughts. And tip number nine, breathe.